I've been thinking about finding joy in homemaking a lot lately, plus the mundane tasks of homemaking. Those two things are sort of an oxymoron. The word mundane gets thrown around in homemaking and motherhood communities on social media. I've been hearing it a ridiculous amount of times on some of my favorite podcasts lately, so it's likely why it's been on my mind. I'm feeling very conflicted about the word. On one hand, I long for the mundane, the simple life, a routine, finding confidence in the pleasure and work of motherhood and homemaking. But on the other hand, I am so tired of the mundane. I'm tired of the consistency of laundry, washing windows that never seem to stay clean for more than 10 minutes, dishes, meal making, homeschooling, animal caretaking, and answering the same question from my sons for what seems like the thousandth time. So today we're going to explore the concept of the joy of homemaking, and I'm going to show you what the Bible says about the mundane tasks of life and how we can use these everyday simple tasks to glorify the Lord and find joy in our calling as mothers, homemakers, and Christian women. Today's video is brought to you by the Healing Homes Magazine, Spring and Summer Edition. I'm so excited about this physical and digital magazine. This is our sixth edition and it gets more and more beautiful with each edition. The Spring and Summer Edition will focus on the concept of being rooted and the scripture verse Colossians 2, 6 through 7. You will see stunning photos and articles on gardening, healthy living, recipes, spiritual encouragement, and more. Grab your copy at healinghome.co slash magazine or visit Amazon to order. What does the Bible say about finding beauty in the mundane? Let's start with Philippians 2, 6 through 10 and 1 John 2, 6. Who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And then 1 John 2, 6. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. I know what you might be thinking. What do these verses have to do with the mundane? These verses don't just apply to the homemaker and mother, but rather to everyone who claims Christ as their king. Often the mundane tasks of homemaking make us feel like a servant. We feel gypped or wronged by our family and busy household as they continue to disregard our efforts. They just keep making messes that we have to clean up. They keep eating food that we have to go and purchase again. Our daily to-do list seems to have the same things on it over and over again. If you're anything like me at one time or another, you may have thought something along the lines of, if I was here by myself, I wouldn't have to do any of this. All of this I do for my family. Exactly. If 1 John 2, 6 is true and and we are to follow Christ's example, and to walk in the same way that he did, then we have a true servant's life to lead. Look at verse 7 of Philippians 2. Jesus was a servant, and he emptied himself out for his calling. No doubt that that's uncomfortable, but as we look to God's word, we see over and over again a call to servant living. I'm not talking about being a doormat where we're constantly walked over and disregarded, but rather a heart of servanthood where we look to Jesus as our example and find a true joy in our role as mothers and homemakers. We can't go much further without discussing what biblical womanhood is. Years ago, I did a study at John Piper's church at Bethlehem Baptist in Minnesota titled Biblical Womanhood in a Postmodern Culture, written by Linda Linder. It was a challenging study, and I will admit that I pushed back on a lot what I was learning about a gospel-centered home. The study defined biblical womanhood as this, the state of being a woman who is devoted to God-breathed truth of the Bible, 
embracing her feminine design as ordained by God in his word and echoing the eternal relationships within the Trinity. In addition, there are five marks of a biblical woman outlined in the study. A biblical woman stands on the word of God. A biblical woman trusts the word of God. A biblical woman obeys the word of God. A biblical woman reflects the word of God. And a biblical woman rejoices in the word of God. As the study went on, my notes in the study became more and more intense and the pages blackened with ink. What is fascinating to me is that what was challenging to me at the time naturally has become my convictions as I have lived out motherhood and homemaking. As you seek biblical womanhood, align yourself with God's word. It's okay to make mistakes and struggle with certain standards of the modern church. When we seek the Holy Spirit, spend time in God's word, and prayerfully seek the truth, we will gradually understand what biblical womanhood is. Understanding what biblical womanhood is and living it out are two very different things. I don't disagree with any of the statements that I just recited. I believe in the inerrancy of scripture and the calling to biblical truth. However, when the rubber meets the road and I'm called to live out love, joy, peace, patience, etc., when a grubby little one-year-old disobeys me for the tenth time that day, my sinful response naturally turns to anger. Yet as biblical women, we are called to have a gentle and quiet spirit. Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold, jewelry, or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. 1 Peter 3, 3-4 We're going to take a quick break to highlight a recipe on the Healing Home Recipes site that I think many of you will find helpful. I don't know about you, but my grocery budget is feeling quite pinched at the moment. Granted, our boys are growing at ridiculous paces, so that certainly contributes to the situation, but the rising cost of groceries are certainly to blame as well. I'm finding myself turning back all excess fat, so to speak, to focus on just the grocery necessities. I love purchasing nut pods for my coffee, which is a dairy-free, gluten-free, and sugar-free creamer that is all diet approved, like Whole30, Keto, Trim Healthy Mama, etc. However, I just can't swing it on a regular basis anymore. That is why my homemade coffee creamer is such a lifesaver. It uses basic ingredients to get a rich, creamy flavor that can be poured into your coffee guilt-free and will be quite a bit more friendly on a grocery budget. Check it out at HealingHomeRecipes.co. Let's chat about four tips for changing our mindset when the ordinary days of homemaking leave us with feelings of discontent. Focus on the next right thing. Do the next right thing. But how do we know what the next right thing is? Well, it helps to know what our calling is and what we alone can do. You see, I might be called to make video content about homemaking and motherhood, but I alone am not the only one who can do it. There are thousands of others making content and probably doing it better than me. Do you know what others cannot do? They cannot be Wyatt's mom. They cannot be West Wilder's or Waylon's mom. They cannot be Dan's wife. Those are job titles and callings that have been exclusively given to me. The same goes for you. Honestly, this might be a bit controversial, so please understand what I'm saying. If you are married, have children, or in a home, or any combination of those, you have been called to be the keeper of that home. Now the specifics of that calling are up to you, God, and your husband, but I do believe that even if you are called to be outside of the home in the workforce, your calling is also to be the keeper of your home. 
I'm sure I could flush this out a little bit more than this and maybe go into deeper specifics, but I'll just say that I think that we make this topic way too black and white. There are not just two options. Either you're a stay-at-home mom or a working mom. There are so many more beautiful gray areas. I'm so grateful for those women who are called to be in the workforce, such as nurses, doctors, lawyers, etc. We need those women. However, I also think that we have been called to be nurturers of our family and keepers of our home, regardless of where in that gray area we stand. When we focus on the next right thing, we need to know what our ultimate calling is. When a mothering task comes up while I'm also doing a household task, the mothering task trumps the household task. Honestly, the same goes for my working life. By knowing our calling and titles like mother, homemaker, content creator, teacher, etc., we will better know what the next right thing is. There is beauty in dirty dishes. I just lost some of you, didn't I? You see, God gave me the strength to pick up the dirty dishes that my family just made, wash them, or place them in the dishwasher. He gave me the strength to cook the food that my family just ate to dirty those dishes. God blessed us with the resources to put that food on our table for our young boys to consume. By his grace, he gave us the jobs and careers to be able to work for the money that in turn put the food on the table that I was able to cook, my family was able to consume, and then those dirty dishes were made. There's beauty in the mundane because there is always a heavenly process of provision that those mundane tasks were made from. A practical way to change our mindset is changing one simple word, and that word is have to get. You get to do these things. They are a privilege. You get to do those dishes. You get to make the beds. You get to do the laundry. You get to love on your children. You get to love on your husband. You get to live in this home and minister to these precious people. Everyday life is hard work. Our homes need constant attention, and I'm under no illusion that the tasks get boring and draining amid so many other responsibilities. However, we are truly blessed to have homes, and changing our mindset from have to get is a simple way to help our hearts understand the gift of homemaking. Remember to look at the big picture, and remember that this, that this joyless or mundane task is just a small obstacle in a much larger story. When you change have to get, you also find an opportunity for worship. A simple way to make a mundane task into a life-giving task is to turn on some worship music or a favorite podcast. You will find that there is so much joy in changing your negative attitude to a positive attitude. I once heard a comedian, or maybe it was a pastor, I'm not sure, but he stated that women were multipliers. Now at first I was like, whoa, dude, you better be careful with what you say next. But he went on to say that when women are given something, they multiply it. They are given a house and they will make a home. They are given a husband and they will create a family. You get to be a multiplier and it's a God-given privilege, not a burden. View homemaking and motherhood as a ministry. I love this tip because it gives us purpose. Your homemaking is a ministry. There are people under your roof and these people are eternal souls. A mundane task like folding laundry can serve our families in profound ways. Not only is your family clothed, but you are setting an example for them of a good work ethic, perseverance, and time management. You can also use mundane tasks as moments for ministry with your children. This will vary depending on their age, but consider doing laundry with your children and have meaningful conversations with them. Other mundane tasks can be used as teaching tools too. Need to cook dinner? Bring them along and have them measure and do math problems. There are countless ways to make your home into a healing home so that when your family members walk through its doors, they find comfort and shelter from the storms of life. Our homes can be healing homes that truly give life to our family members. This is the ministry that you are doing. You are creating a place where the gospel can ring true in the hearts of those that enter your doors. I've heard this called the aroma of your home and I love that. The little things that you do from lighting a candle for ambience, to having comfortable pillows on your couches, to reading the Bible at dinner time, or freshly baked bread, all contribute to the aroma of your home and all these little things, although not entirely necessary, are those things that when your children think back on their childhood and home, 
will contribute to the overall aroma that they remember. In order to have a relationship with your spouse, you have to communicate. The same goes for your children. Can you imagine trying to have a relationship with them without communicating? It might be cliche, but the same goes for your relationship with God. You need to spend time in God's Word and in prayer. It does not matter what stage of motherhood you are in, each one of us is busy. And each one of us has a busy household. Spending time with God is a non-negotiable habit, and without a doubt, it is the most important thing that we can do as we pursue being keepers of our home and builders of our home. A quick note on essential habits. Every homemaker is going to be different, but I find that there are essential habits that if I get done during my day will make my heart lighter, my mind at peace, and my to-do list checked off to my satisfaction. These will be different for everyone, but I'll include my list here as a helpful tool. My bed was made at the beginning of the day. The bathroom counters and mirrors are wiped down. My kitchen has been put to rest at the end of the day. The dishwasher is loaded at the end of the day and running, and one load of laundry has been washed and put away. These are just the essentials and they vary depending on my work schedule and season. One helpful way to keep track of daily necessities of a home is through a home management binder. I have an undated home management binder available for free on my website or you can check out our membership where we have our 2024 binder available in printable or digital format for iPads and tablets. We will never have a perfect house, but we can have a functional house. Coming up with your own essential habits is a high value way of creating order in our homes. Have you ever found that you get frustrated by the mundane tasks of homemaking and motherhood? Doing the various aspects of homemaking can feel mundane and frustrating at times, or maybe all the time. Truthfully, one task that I'm super sick of right now is washing my windows. Our home is positioned in such a way that sunlight shows every streak and handprint. I have no solution for finding joy in homemaking as I wash windows, besides that it's a task that needs to be done regularly and I have to pray through my frustration and switch my mindset to find joy. Honestly, if the biggest project of my day is to find joy in washing the windows, I'm pretty blessed. However, do you know what would become toxic? If I allowed my dirty windows to dictate my emotions. Too often, I found that mom rage explodes out simply because my external environment is causing me stress. Joyful homemaking will come as we continually seek the Lord in these mundane moments that cause us emotional friction. Seek the Lord in His strength. Seek His presence continually. Psalms 105.4 You will find that as a Christian homemaker, When we're continually seeking the Lord, it will make a world of difference in our attitude and how we treat our family. Real joy comes from the Lord and not our present circumstances. How about you? What mundane homemaking task can you find joy in in this week? What is a simple way that you can glorify God in the mundane? I hope that you have found this encouragement helpful as you walk your journey of finding joy in homemaking.